uh, overall AI, Dan, what's your watch list in, in AI for 2024? Yeah, so, you know, kind of like I did with NVIDIA, I'm going to skip some of the obvious picks. The obvious pick for AI, in my opinion, is Microsoft. So I'm just going to run past that one and, and, and talk about a few other companies I think are really interesting. Um, first of all, I think those that got the indemnification right and that focused on private data are going to be very interesting plays in, in 2024. Uh, we know I think IBM led the way on governance and, you know, we continue to say, but look, companies are going to have to demarcate their private or, you know, their what I call unique proprietary data from the scraping the Internet for data. That's what this New York Times lawsuit is going to teach us is that it does come down to who has more rich data than who has the platforms and who's building, you know, technologies that enable grounded, vectorized data sets to be implemented and utilized uh, securely. And it won't just be about indemnification, but it's gonna be about actually building technology that doesn't let you get into legal trouble. <laughs> so by the way, that's gonna be a really important conversation in, in AI, that's gonna be a watch item all year long. We didn't talk about this company, Pat, in, uh, in, in semis much, so I'm gonna talk about it in AI. But I actually think Broadcom has a really interesting year ahead of it as we do see this pivot um, you know, from AI data centers to broader data center. All the movement of data and networking is gonna be really, really important. So Broadcom has a very interesting play from an AI standpoint of who moves the data. And that you know, goes into then companies in our infrastructure space. It's HPE, it's Dell, it's Cisco, the network itself, it's the data center uh, construction, the edge, we got to have to move data around at a very, very high rate with very low latency. And we're going to have to figure out ways to do this with, an, with, with economics. And so those economics are going to become very important. It's going to be, how do we do AI and make it affordable? Now, one other um, item I'll say is, one, people are not talking about this, Pat, but Futurum Intelligence actually released a report. I think it went live today um, on what we called our decision-making data dashboard for AI and companies are actually, this is gonna be a topic for the year, but companies are very early in their implementation of AI. Um, we heard Chuck Robbins at Cisco last quarter talk about the fact that their, their revenue, they had to, they lowered expectations because basically customers had overbought this infrastructure that I'm talking about. And now they have to put it into, you gotta put it into commission to actually start using. Um, we found that we're seeing a 300% rise in companies that will be spending multi-million dollars in their AI strategies next year. Um, so what's happening now is companies this year, it was all about the infrastructure. That was all the buying. The buying wasn't actually companies using AI. And so who are they planning to use? Well, our data basically calls out the winners here. And I told you it was Microsoft, but you know who the number one IS provider for AI? I mean, yeah, it's AWS. It was AWS. But there was a couple of interesting ones in there. IBM actually came in in top, in top five uh, partners for end-to-end -end AI. And, you know, a couple others I'll mention. I think Salesforce has one of the actual productized AI offerings that they can sell and monetize. And then I think uh, in AI service now or any sort of workflow automation tools, iPass and, and then as well as service and workflow automation tools are going to be very important because that's going to be an early iteration of AI. It's been ongoing and companies are going to double down because you're hearing rumors right now, Pat, that four in 10 companies are planning to meaningfully cut their headcounts next year in trade for AI use cases, which will be another big trend line is going to be productivity and efficiency in trade off of new hiring. Good stuff, man. Thanks. Uh, but the great part about AI is is you left oxygen. Oh my God. There's a million directions you can go, dude. I, I bounced all over the place. Yeah, so um, I'll take this two, two things. So, so some technologies and companies that, that I think are gonna do well uh, in what I'll call the wave two, right? We're currently in, in wave one uh, where there has been you know, a lot of build out, not a whole lot of money being made aside from the NVIDIAs of the world. Um, 
and you know it's kind of a you know people are dry you know driving down uh, demand for basic enterprise stuff to put all that money into AI yet you know AI servers are being stranded because they can't get GPUs like a catch-22 so yeah some of the some of the things to to, to watch are these multimodal capabilities uh, we we're starting to see that we're going to see a lot more of that in 2024 and what does that mean what that means is that a a single chatbot or a single agent can do video can do audio can do photos can do text all in one and more importantly it can find relational uh interrelationships between them to give to, to get you better uh to give you better better answers uh while there was some questioning of this the the blue duck uh in the um uh google's latest uh models that it it, it brought out and how it did it but that is a multimodal uh, capability that that they were uh, that they were showing off there. Uh, I think that we're going to see, you know, training will continue, but we're going to see a lot of action at the edge and and inference at the edge. So, you know, some of the winners here are going to be PC companies, edge infrastructure companies like Dell and HPE. Uh, you're going to see um, IBM be a really interesting play here as a as really the enterprise solutions provider for AI for regulated industries and, and where it just, you can't be wrong, zero risk. Um, I also think you're going to see some of the, some of the magic move out, you know, to the non Microsoft SaaS like Adobe uh, and, uh, and box. I think what's, what's kind of on the outs uh, could be, employees that are in accounts payable and accounts receivable right dan you talked about uh, companies wanting to dial back the amount of resource i think legal uh, is going to be uh, transformed in in 2024 um, i am talking to a lot of lawyers that uh, are doing some of their first pass research against um, highly optimized models uh, for for legal and i'm don't confuse those with the dumb lawyer who, you know, used ChatGPT to create cases that, you know, never even existed, right? These are highly optimized uh, uh, models out there. You know, I alluded this to a little bit with the uh, New York Times and OpenAI lawsuit, but video and imagery outputs that break, uh, that, that break copyrights, you know, I'm just envisioning myself or the jury pool looking at this video versus this video right this photo versus this photo being it yep that, that was ripped off so i think that that you know we need to keep an eye on the companies that are doing that um and do they go poof uh, i i don't know but but they could yeah you know yeah we didn't really even talk about it too with AI, Pat, but a real 24 item to watch the election. I mean, I don't want to go down like that rabbit hole, but I mean, how can you not mention like, yeah. like, you know, deep fakes, misinformation, um, you know, all kinds of different ways that AI is going to be used to mislead. Of course, it could be used to help people too. It doesn't all have to be negative, but I just don't see people putting in the work to figure it out. And I see a lot of information being amplified and algorithms taking wrong uh info and gosh it just seems like it's a little isn't it doesn't it just seem like a disaster waiting to happen in some ways yeah you know the big uh the big companies are you know girding to 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 block stuff and and monitor stuff but i just you know it's going to be spy versus spy and i just i just think it's going to be a timing thing. You know, most of the social media platforms have turned off um, political advertising a month before the election, um, which is an interesting play. They're leaving a bunch of money on the table, but I also think it's it's trying to circumvent maybe some of the paid advertising and, and some of the, you know, fake videos and, and, and fake news.